Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to what will be a Monday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. It's actually Saturday, but I'm not going to post this until Monday, so I'll call this a Monday edition on a Saturday of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and um, as I promised earlier in the week, I went back and I looked at my 2017 predictions, and poof! Boy, oh boy, oh boy, did I miss the mark on my predictions for 2017. Um, so I'm going to go over those in today's show, uh, talk about how uh, close or not close I came, and in most cases it was not close, um, but it'll be fun to hear how poorly I did in predicting the 2017 season for the Metropolitans. So I did my prediction show um, on March 30th of 2017. It was just before the season started, and um, my 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 first prediction was uh, that 2017 would not be as bad as 2007. And I suppose the optimist in me can say, "Hey, I was right. It wasn't as bad as 2007." Um, <laughs> But I don't know. It's it's debatable which season was worse. You know, at least 2007 we had a whole season where, up until the last two weeks or so, I guess the last month you could really say all of September. But up until the last really two weeks or so, the Mets were dominant. I mean, again, it was like their second consecutive year of just dominating the National League East. Um, and then, of course, as we know, the collapse happened and whatever. Um, was that worse than what happened in 2017, where everybody got hurt, and everybody got traded, the team finished 30 games under 500, or you know, 23 games under 500? Was that worse, uh, or or was 2007 worse? I don't know. But the bottom line is, I thought 2017 was going to be great, and it was a shit show. So I was wrong on that one. <laughs> Prediction number two I made in the uh, preseason was regarding our friend Ioannis Cespedes. I suggested that Cespedes was going to have an MVP caliber season. I said Cespedes was gonna put up uh, um, 40 home runs, 101 RBIs. He was gonna play the majority of the season and again, way off. Uh, Cespedes played exactly 50% of the season. So he played 81 games, he hit, um, he hit uh, 17 home runs, and he had 42 RBIs. So, now, if he had stayed healthy, project those numbers out across the season, you got 34 uh, home runs and uh, 84 RBIs. That's not bad, um, but it's a far cry from the 40 and 101 that I was talking about as far as uh, M MVP uh, candidacy uh, was concerned for, for Cespedes. So, um, I was wrong on that one. Uh, again. My next prediction was about Jay Bruce. And Jay Bruce was one of the lone bright spots for the Mets in 2017. Um, in the preseason, I did get one thing right. I said that Bruce would be traded. The reason, however, was a little bit different. I suggested that Bruce might be traded because Conforto was going to play himself into the lineup every day. And if you remember the beginning of the season and preseason, there was all kinds of talk about Conforto having to earn his way onto the everyday, uh, into the everyday starting, um, uh, starting uh, lineup uh, and that there would be some platooning with Granderson and maybe with Bruce. And uh, So the, the thought that I had there was that Bruce was going to end up um, that Bruce was going to end up traded because Conforto had such a great year. Um, that did kind of happen. Conforto did have a really good year, but Bruce was not traded for that reason. He was traded because the Mets turned to shit and had an awful season, and they got whatever they could for Jay. Um, I did say that Bruce was going to hit 27 home runs on the year. I was way, way off on that mark as well. Uh, he ended up hitting 40 on the year, and he had 100 and I'm sorry, uh, 36 on the year. Sorry, and he had 104 RBIs or 106 RBIs or 101 RBIs, something in that vicinity. So uh, again, I knew that Bruce was going to have a good year, but I think he had a better year than any of us had expected. Uh, I had suggested that only half of his 27 home runs were going to be hit as a Met. So I was thinking like 14, 15 maybe home runs as a Met. 
Um, turned out I was wrong there too. He, he hit 29 home runs with the Mets. So um, Jay Bruce, again, uh, one of the lone bright spots of the 2017 season. So to go from a bright spot to an extremely not bright spot, uh, David Wright was the subject of my next prediction, and I predicted that David Wright was going to play in fewer than 40 games, and that was a dismal prediction. I mean, that was sort of way lower than we thought it was going to be for David, and uh, it turns out I was wrong. Uh, although I was right because zero is definitely less than 40. So David Wright did not play in a single game in 2017. Um, and I proposed that he would play fewer than 40 games. And my, my thought there was he was gonna play maybe the first month or so, uh, first five weeks or so of the season, have a season ending injury and be forced to retire. That was my, uh, my thought process on that. Um, it didn't happen. And the retirement talk has um, has not taken hold. So um, at this point, there's no sign that David's going to retire. In fact, he said he wants to come back. He feels strong. He feels like he can contribute. So uh, I was wrong about the retirement talk, but unfortunately, I was not wrong about David Wright playing in fewer than 40 games. If I have to pull into a parking spot for this these next two predictions because I do have to read a couple of these stats because the next two um, predictions I made were uh, pertaining to um, pitchers. The first one was Noah Syndergaard. Um, I predicted that Noah Syndergaard was going to defy the, the notion from Nolan Ryan's personal pitching fella there that said putting on all that weight, all that weight is gonna do damage to Syndergaard. He's not gonna be able to recover properly. He's gonna get hurt. Uh, I believe that that man suggested Tommy John surgery. I said hogwash, Syndergaard's a, a bull, he's a tank, he's a beast, he'll be fine. He was not. Uh, he, he, uh, I predicted a 17-win campaign for Noah with an ERA sub-3. Uh, he won one game um, <laughs> this year. He threw 30 innings. Um, he did have a sub-3 ERA, ended up with a 2.97 ERA, so... Um, there, there's that, I guess, but, um, the, the end result of the, the 20 pounds of muscle that Syndergaard put on turned out to be a detriment to him, and Nolan Ryan's guy was right, and I was wrong. Speaking of I was wrong, uh, Matt Harvey was another prediction I made in, on March 30th. Um, I predicted that, uh, Matt Harvey was going to have a a good bounce back return from injury season. I equated it sort of to his 2015 season where he came back after missing uh, a whole year from Tommy John uh, and he came back stronger than ever. He had a dynamite season. Well, of course, 2016 was cut short thanks to his thoracic outlet syndrome and various injuries relating to that. He had the surgery, came back in 2017. I said, Harvey's gonna be great. Uh, we don't have anything to worry about. Um, I also made it clear that he's never going to go back and be that, or he wasn't going to go back and be that dominant Matt Harvey that he was in 2015, but I thought he was going to be good. I said 13 wins and a mid three ERA, sort of putting him as the number three starter in the rotation behind uh, Thor and DeGrom. Um, to say that I was drastically wrong about the, the Harvey prediction would be an understatement. Uh, Harvey, again, I predicted 13 wins, Harvey won five games. Five, five uh, wins on the year, a 6.7 ERA. So he won fewer than half of the games that I thought he was going to win, and he doubled his ERA that I thought he was going to have. So um, the, the, the silver lining for Matt Harvey, as he said it himself at the end of the year, the nightmare season is over, and he, he put, he's putting 2017 behind him, and hopefully he can come back in 2018 and put together some semblance of a good season because it will be his last year uh, before free agency and I don't expect him to be a Met beyond 2018 but for his sake I, I do hope that he's able to return to form so that he can get a contract from somebody and uh, keep, the, keep things alive for him. Uh, the final prediction I made was about the team's standings and the team's record and I completely flip-flopped flip those two. Uh, I said the Mets were going to finish 93 and 69 en route to their second National League East Division crown in three years. And I boldly predicted and perhaps foolishly predicted that the Mets would win the World Series. 
as we know, that did not happen. Uh, the Mets finished almost completely the opposite uh, direction. Uh, they had 70 wins and 92 losses. So I was uh, uh, to say that I was off by a little bit again would be an understatement. So those were my predictions and how wrong I was about them in 2017. Um, I was so wrong, in fact, that I almost don't want to predict anything for 2018, but of course I will. Uh, but I, I, I'm glad I was able to go back and look at that video. It reminded me of how optimistic I was. I think all Mets fans were at the outset of 2017. I don't know that we're ever going to feel that way um, again uh, for a while. I think that our trust has been betrayed by the team. Not that they did it on purpose, of course, but I, I do think that there's going to need to be some good faith moves done by the team just to show that they're back and they're healthy and um, so far, so good. They've made some good moves, and I'll talk about the different acquisitions and moves and signings and coaching assignments and whatnot in greater depth uh, later in the week. But um, I'm glad I was able to get this recorded. Uh, again, it is Saturday, but I'm posting this on Monday, so thanks for watching on Monday. Um, hopefully the weather looks the same so it doesn't look that sketchy that I posted this uh, on a different day, even though I did disclose that on the outset. So uh, Again, thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.